Hello everyone, welcome to Be Waste Wise. I am Shweta Vandapani. I am the community builder at Be Waste Wise. And uh, today's uh, webinar topic is circular economy mentoring, access to support and networks. We have Emma Burlow, who's the head of uh, circular economy at Resource Futures, who is moderating this panel. In the past, Emma has also been a, she's been a panelist on one of our webinars, uh, I think a couple of years ago. And uh, today she's gonna talk to Inat Shilik, who's a global circular economy mentors coordinator at Circular Economy Club. We also have David O'Connor, head of customer happiness sustainability mentors. Uh, and before handing this to Emma, I just wanna remind you, we will take your questions. Emma is gonna take your questions in the last 25 to 30 minutes. So please ensure you use the Q&A section, post your questions there so that uh, she knows how much time to give for the audience questions. And uh, we will also have some polls this time. So just like just be around and be attentive that's it so i'm handing this over to emma thanks very much morning everyone or morning from the uk i know we're we're broadcasting from across the globe so um i'm really pleased to be here today and thank you for asking me to host host this panel um i'm really pleased to introduce in Chilik from circular economy club and daniel from sustainability mentors so these are both Two organizations that I've been involved in. Uh, I was really keen that the rest of the world knew about them um, and I'm really keen to hear a bit more about them and how we can all get involved. Um, I think the reason for wanting to do this today is I have a strong belief that the best way that we can accelerate change towards sustainability or a more circular economy is to share learning and to learn from each other and to network like crazy um, and to act globally. So really looking forward to hearing a bit more about that. Um, so without further ado, I think I'll launch into some, some you know, easy questions like why did you start the mentoring platform? What was the driver? Um, can you give us a little bit of a history? Inna, can you start? Of course, pleasure, Emma. Um, I want to start mentioning the Circular Economy Club actually started in uh, 2012. And it was um, created something like a broader, broader mentoring program was uh, uh, something that has been developed later on uh, in the process of the development of the club. But it started um, as um, with our founder, Anna Tari, who realized at some point that there's a huge number of great initiatives around circular economy, but they're all lacking visibility, uh, lacking the right tools and more importantly lacking connections to each other to have a bigger impact. So she studied the club um, and it grew up quite nicely. It started with uh, a lot of uh, networking events and the space for people to get together, talk about circular economy and challenges that are, uh, they're facing in different areas of the work and um, slowly grew into three main priority areas that we currently have. So um, the networking part uh, grew into what we call right now is Circular Economy Club chapters, which is um, um, representative of 260 different city organizers or clubs in different locations around the globe. Um, and uh, they're working on creating the um, deeper communities and coordinating global events in um, these cities. Um, another area of work is around education and certification. We started providing um, different uh, platforms to get knowledge and insights about what is circular economy, uh, what does it mean and how it can be applied in a more a practical aspect and the third part is about uh, putting together experts and startups or researchers or people who need support so it's all about this mentoring program that i'm I have been a privilege to be part of um, right now we have about 50 mentors um, around uh, the globe they all have their own um, different skills in different specific areas uh, all related to circular economy um, and yes, it's been, it's been a pleasure um, since we launched the program in 2016. Um, we started with only six mentors on board and now we have about 50 uh, mentors uh, providing um, their guidance and mentorship to young startups and researchers um, 
um, yes, it, it, it's been great. And so far, um, you know, we have supported more than 200 uh, different startups in the field. That's and great. Really that's, really, yeah, that's really good. And just to make it clear to everybody, it's free to access? Yes, indeed. Um, the mentoring is free for um, all the people who apply for it, um, which Fabulous. is again a, a fantastic opportunity yeah no it is and i've been involved in for for a couple of years now it's really it's a really great platform dan do you want to tell us a little bit about sustainability mentors dan oh there he is lost you for a minute on mute. there you go sorry keep forgetting to do it. hi everybody good morning good afternoon um thanks for having me here yeah, really grateful to be able to share uh, some stuff that we've learned and uh, hopefully offer an opportunity for you guys. So I'm Dan and um, Sustainability Mentor is quite a new um, initiative, quite a new project. It's only started in the end of October last year. Um, what it is, it's a, it's a free platform where anybody who is working towards the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, whatever role you're in, uh, you can join and you can either find a mentor yeah, or be a mentor or find a mentee or be a mentee. Yeah. So there's two sides of that coin. And um, the stimulation for creating the platform was a bit of an accident, really. I was actually looking for a mentor um, as part of my um, personal growth. Um, I, run, I run another business, which is my primary sort of um, focus, if you like. And uh, I, I was looking for a mentor for ages, like, I'd say probably two or three years and couldn't find anybody. I don't know whether it's to do with the, with the stiff British upper lip and we're a bit sort of um, bit shy, the British are a bit sort of polite, but it's really hard to find a mentor in, in, in England, the UK. Um, I don't know why. It's just not in our culture, really. Um, I know it is in America. But um, yeah, I couldn't find anybody. So one, one, one weekend when I had a bit of brain space, I thought, oh, I'm just going to build a landing page and put it on the internet and I'm going to pretend that this is a real service and anyone who signs up, I'll be, I'll be able to see, I'll be able to pick which mentor I want. And um, I thought I'd maybe get like, and I put it on LinkedIn on like the Friday night or, 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 the, or the Saturday morning. I put it on LinkedIn thinking, oh, I'll, I'll get like 20 people, 30 people. And if I do get 20, 30 people, I'll just match them up in the background, you know, and have a spreadsheet and it'll, it'll work fine. But uh, in the first two weeks, we had a thousand people join. So that kind of blew my mind. And it really highlighted that um, there's a problem that needs to be fixed. You know, people need guidance. First of all, people need guidance so they can grow and get outside the comfort zone and have maxim maximize their impact. That's the first thing. But also, there's a lot of um, people out there who've been working in sustainability for 10, 15, 20 years who've made all the mistakes already, you know, and they've gone down cul de stacks and got stuck and they've been frustrated, and, but now they're still winning and they're still having a big impact. And, and they want a nice way to pass on that, that learning to other people. So that really highlighted that there was a problem. So I went ahead and commissioned some software and we built a platform. And um, now you're obviously COVID's really impacted the last three months, but there's 1500 people on there. There's 200 matched up mentors and mentees. And um, that's where we are as of today. That's great. That's fabulous, Dan. And um, yeah, you're right. There's a few of us who have made a few mistakes, but we can pass those on. And, and I have lots of informal conversations with startups all the time and and people and, and you sort of come away thinking was that a mentor conversation you know and actually it probably was you know you're helping people all the time um and um i, I just think there are thousands of people around around the world who who can you know can really get value from these sorts of schemes so um you touched on the sort of key benefits there um what, what's the key benefit for being a mentor do you think because obviously the, the benefits of mentee are quite obvious what about being a mentor? What do you think? I mean, I can say mine, but what do you think people get most from it? Uh, Dan, do you want to go? Great. So, great question. Um, so, by being a mentor, um, first of all, you know, you can really start, uh, if you haven't already, develop, develop your managerial or your sort of coaching style, you know, because you've got this mentee or this Padawan, you know, like a Jedi Padawan, who you can sort of really sort of get into your own, um, managerial style without sort of in an official sort of capacity, if you like. And um, so you develop your leadership style, your leadership skills. Um, you also, you know, by helping somebody, you know, by giving your time to somebody, 
you know, that is a, a that's a mental boost. It's a it's a spiritual boost. It's you know, it's good for you to like share. You know, share your give your time to someone else to see them improve. It's a real nice thing to do. Um, also, you know, the generally the mentees younger, so they're actually going to push you in the sort of places you haven't been before. You know, they might be on TikTok. You know, they might be on Twitter. That, you know, they're doing new things that you're not used to. So they're like going to be giving, feeding you stuff as well. You know, like new trends in the profession. You know, as you grow up through the high rock in your profession, you stop reading the magazines, you stop looking at the websites because you don't get time. You know, you're always in meetings or whatever. So this mentee, this Padawan is going to be showing you new trends in your profession as well. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is the biggest one for me, right? When you make a mistake anywhere in your life, right? If you keep it to yourself and you make the learning from it, that's really good, right? So as long as you learn from your mistake, that's great, right? But how about you can unleash the power of that mistake by sharing it with other people? You know, you can, you can massively increase your impact. Okay, you can get your own personal growth from that mistake that you made. That's if you do that, that's great. But if you even share it with everyone else, they're then learning as well. So you massively build your accumulating impact through sharing that, um, sharing that mistake. From a selfish point of view, to be a mentor, you can spot talent early. You know, you can see who's the, who's the rising stars. And, you know, I mean, you know, if you work in a big consultancy or, or whatever, whatever you, wherever you may be, even in a startup or whatever, you know, you can spot that. You can spot that early talent. Um, also, you know, now more than ever, you know, you want to get out the humdrum of the office, you know, and you want to get out that space, you know, and get off those Zoom calls with your stuffy colleagues and talk to someone new, you know. Um, of course, you know, we're, we're all here for a long time. So even though you might just have a mentee for that six month, or that 12 month period or whatever period you choose, you know, you're going to start to develop a, a special professional reciprocating relationship as well. You know, so like, and I, I, I see this in my own business, my, my, my primary business where I might, have a, I might have a graduate as an intern or whatever at some point. And then two and three years later, they actually become a customer of mine. That's happened several times. Um, so, you know, and finally, just to wrap up on the benefits, there's, there's loads more, but just to wrap up, because I don't, I don't know, I don't know whether on too long. Um, you know, this is all about, you know, community, you know, and just sharing that knowledge, that expertise. So that, you know, and this is the main thing, right? Is so that we can accelerate sustainability. We haven't got long to do this, you know. The, the UN is talking about, you know, 10 to 15 years. That they're the most conservative scientists in the world. Yeah. So you take that with a bit of alarm. So we've got to really accelerate what we're doing. So by sharing, sharing our mistakes as quickly as possible and learning on them, then you know we're going to accelerate that transition. Brilliant, thanks, Dan. I think that was really comprehensive, and I can't agree more. Some of the people that that I mentor, I come across, just blow my mind, and I, you know, I just think there's so much creativity and innovation out there. And what I love seeing is the uh, uh, transfer from different sectors. So things that I wouldn't have thought would happen. You know, and, and I sort of, my cogs are really worrying when I come off a call with, with mentees. Uh, yeah, Ina, did you want to add anything to that around the benefits of being a mentor? Um, yeah, it will be quite a challenge because both you, yourself and Dan has given a really yeah, sorry, yeah. description. But I can add something, of course, like of course. what we hear back from our mentors uh, when we have the follow up conversation with them, a lot of them. Um, talk about this notion of being in touch with the recent development in the field because circular economy has grown so dramatically during the last years in, in so many different areas. Um, um, and it, it's a really great way for the mentors to know what's going on in the field. Uh, where's the innovation going? Uh, what are the new things? A little bit of a cross-pollination of ideas that you mentioned them all already as well. Um, so far, we have like really, really um, good conversations with our mentors um, of like the level of engagement and involvement also of the mentees um, into trying to solve the wicked challenges that we're all facing is incredible. Just being in touch with this spark that all the young entrepreneurs have and their passion for for change and their passion for life and making things better and move us closer to more prosperous inclusive and client resilient society it's it's quite like um it's catchy it's it's it gives it's something that uh, 
uh, gives the fuel to the mentors as well to continue the important work that they are doing in their lives. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I find it hugely motivating um, and illuminating. And actually, something popped into my head there. I quite, I quite often talk to clients about their advisory panels, and you know, usually advisory panels are made up of the great and the good and people that have been through the meal and all the rest of it. But actually, the more I think about it, all advisory panels ought to have, you know, a couple of uh, new entrants people who are just coming to this fresh, coming from a different sector, coming from even from uni, wherever. Because you're absolutely right, you know, it brings such a wider breadth of creativity than, than anybody that's been doing something for 25 years can possibly have, you know. So I think that's fabulous. Thanks for your questions, uh, for your answers, guys. I think we're going to go over to our first poll. Sweater, is that right? Can we do our first poll? Great, thank you. So I'll give you a, a minute or so to, um, to fill this in. So. If you're, um, so actually the question is, what are your reasons for, for, for want, yeah, wanting a mentor? Sorry, I was stuck on mentee for some reason. So if you're interested in having a mentor, is it so that you want to learn from someone, to grow your network, to share your ideas, to help further your career? What we're really interested in is what the key drivers are. So you can choose more than one of these or just one, whichever is your biggest. Off we go. We'll know when... I think we'll know when everyone's voted. Uh, so yeah, let me just end the poll now. Okay, great. So can we see the results straight away? Yep. Wow, okay. that's great. Okay. So out in front uh, is to share ideas and get feedback, which I think is, is great and has come out already in the conversations that we've had um, and someone to learn from is really strong but actually all four um, are quite you know quite evenly split there um, I think that's really interesting I think one of the challenges um, about sharing ideas is what we do how we how we cap you know how we um, capitalize on those ideas so so there's a lot of talk and there's a lot of sharing and I think to really make progress, we need to um, mobilize those ideas. And, you know, there's some really interesting ways of doing that. And being online globally this morning is, is just one of them. But I'd be interested if anyone's got any ideas, either in the audience or from the panel, of how you take those ideas forward into, you know, reality. So we don't, you know, we don't want to have a mentor just as a talking shop. It's great to throw things around. But do you know what I mean? It's that next step. Uh, either of you got any thoughts about... Kind of what you do after that conversation. Dan? Yeah, so <clears throat> yeah, you're spot on, you know. Um any endeavor in life that you do, you know, you, you need it, you need a plan. You need to be able to visualize where you want to be in one month, two months, three months, six months, twelve months. And then you need to um pin that vision, break it down into a plan and break that plan down into tasks, you know? So um, you, you, need a, you, need, you need some framework around your mentorship, really. Unless, you know, the, I mean, the thing is, you mentioned it earlier, Emma, there's different types of mentorship, right? There's like the in, there's unofficial, like, mentorship, where you meet people around your sort of career path. You know, you see the same person at the, the water fountain, or you used to, and, or you might see people at, the, at events, and they, they give you a little snippets of information, and... And, you know, I've probably got like, I've probably got like 50 unofficial mentors, Emma, you being one of them, you know, people that I can just check in with every now and then and help me on my way. And that's like the unofficial mentorship. But, you know, if you really want to accelerate that learning and, and get out outside your comfort zone and really want to sort of maximize your impact, yeah, you need, you need, a, proper, you need a proper framework to your mentorship. And um, on our platform, We've got, um, you know, we've, we've got like a, a, a program where you, your first meeting is, you know, the break the ice meeting where you get to know each other and you build that rapport. The second meeting is about what's this vision? What's this vision? Where do you want to be in six months? Where do you want to be in one year? You know, so that, that, at that vision stage, you start to pull out kind of like an action plan after that, you know, of sort of like, what do we need to do next? And then that, that, that then feeds into meeting number two meet number three, meet number four, meet number five, and you review and plan as you go, you know, so um, 
there's a structure to it. You know, there's got to be a structure. If you, if you want a really effective accelerated learning where you're growing consistently, then it needs some sort of vision and an action plan for, for, for me. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Dan. You know, how, do you, how would you answer that? How do you take the conversations one step further? This sort of brings us into how we create impact from these platforms. Yeah, absolutely. Just want to mention, um, uh, expand on what Dan just shared. Um, and we have the saying that like uh, vision without action is just stays there. It doesn't bring us anywhere. And actions without vision uh, are not going to help us uh, solve uh, challenges and problems that we're all facing. So they're, they're both really intertuned and interconnected. And that's, again, like one of the benefits of getting an experienced mentor that um, you can you can have um, support in, in both of the angles. Another thing that I wanted to mention is this um, creating the space and uh, to, to make mistakes and get feedback around them and, and learn from this because like let's, let's face it in, in still in our society and traditional economic system like making mistakes is, is not something that we're really uh, proud of but like sometimes we learn so much from, from just those tiny little mistakes and having a good mentor to support us in this process and, and understand that these are not mistakes, these are just learnings that help us shape uh, the proposition that we're carrying to the world in a, in a better and more efficient way. Uh, so yeah, I would just say these two things and um, to move it forward is just like having the courage to, to make those mistakes, to go out there, to try something to bring something that that is so important to your heart and bring it out and get the feedback and see if it works and it doesn't and change it and adapt and apply and in this continuous loop of trying something learning from it and moving on with the learnings that that you've uh, learned from this experience yeah that's great it's perfect and I've, I've written down the word courage actually and i think the safe space is really really important and I know from, from my career, some of the you know, boldest steps that I've made have been because someone got behind me and said, of course you can do that. You can do that. In fact, I'll help you do that. You know? And um, I really like the idea that a mentor that you've never even met that could be on the other side of the world could give you the courage to do that you know? and the courage to make the mistake and then go back and, and re regroup or whatever. Um, I think that's really powerful. And I think we've all had maybe line managers or bosses that we've you know got that leadership from but this is so different um and i think there was a comment in the in the chat section to say that we can influence people in other areas i mean the mentee can influence the mentor if that mentor is in an organization um like a government organization or involved in eu projects you know they can they can influence which is really powerful and inform them and just say look this is happening you need to know about this stuff on the ground um but also that mentors have implementation experience so so i was speaking to a startup yesterday and and actually you know we got into quite a meaty conversation i actually didn't you know i said i'm not really sure this is this is not where you're going to end up you know this is a great idea but i'm not sure this is the final idea so it's all about having that safe space to sort of say um chew things over and and, and actually take things on to the next level could be as daniel was saying early on could form a partnership you never know you know things I very rarely come off a call, particularly if it's a, you know, an hour or so long, without making some connections. Without saying, I'll put you in touch with so-and-so. Would you like me to introduce you to so-and-so? And so suddenly that network of what, you know, 200,000 people becomes, you know, a real web across, across the globe. Um, so that's really, really exciting. Okay, so um, just looking at how you've set these um, systems up and your platforms, what sort of problems have you had? Have you had to overcome any, 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 any major challenges? Inna, do you want to, do you want to kick off? Yeah, like um, uh, in our case, we're, we're ex still experimenting. It's one huge experiment because it's a non-government organization, which um, is, is, and the work is done only by volunteers. So, uh, and we all have our day-to-day -day jobs and um, trying to do and influence the world in other areas as well. But because we're so united in this passion to our circle economy, um, we're, we're moving together in this space. And of course, a lot of challenges arise. 
uh, starting with how can I f divide the time between um, something that brings me uh, material income and, and doing and pursuing this passion. And of, of course, another um, issue that we've noticed, at least from our side, is that we really want more mentees. Uh, and it seems like um, the capacity and the desire from the mentor side is higher than the amount of application that we receive for, for mentorship, which is definitely something that we did not expect to experience when we initially started the program. We thought it would be the other way around. But um, yeah, I guess uh, that's uh, one of the interesting findings. And we um, have uh, had several attempts to increase the visibility of, of the programs that we do, including uh, two years ago, we started like um, guest mentoring uh, um, competitions where we would invite big names in circular economy area like Professor Walter Stahel or Michael Braungart or Jamie uh, Butterworth. So like attracting the attention uh, from, from the perspective of like getting um, a possibility to, to meet those big names that basically the founders of circular economy as, it, as such um, that, that really helped uh, to bring more uh, people in. But we're also always are sharing this and always saying that if you have something that, um, important that you're working on um, and you need some guidance, please get in touch with us um, because it's, it's a wonderful opportunity and, and it's a benefit for all the parties involved. Yeah, really interesting. And I think I was going to come on to a question. Does this model always have to be um, a free model? You know, we're, we're relying on volunteer, volunteers. So there's no cost to it. I think there was a question really in the Q&A, actually. Is there a cost? And there's no cost to either platform. So I don't know. Have you done? Have you got any thoughts about that? Sort of how do we, you know, in contrast, as you said, in the States, the mentoring or any business mentor or coaching, that sort of thing, there would be a cost applied to that, right? So. I think what it is experiencing is the fact that they're running, you know, a platform with a limited marketing budget, all those sorts of things. It's very difficult to get your name out there um, on, a, on a really limited budget. So what do you think about that? Yeah, so um, this, I was, this, is, this is our challenge as well. You know, it's been really easy for us to prove there's a, there's a, there's a need. Uh, it's been really easy for us to build a platform because we've got soft, software development and things like that. Um, but then my accountant, he, he said to me, this is my main business, he's like, hey, what, what's the sustainability mentor thing that we're paying out for? And I'm like, oh, that's um, this side project I start doing. And he's like, you can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. Like, you know, so I'm, I'm funding the sustainability mentor platform out of the Warped, out of the Warped funds. And the accountant's like kicking off about it because it's not, um, it's not sort of, it's, it's, it's got to be accounted for differently. So that's been our main challenge is, is how do we fund this and what's the business model? So, you know, um, well, that's one of the challenges anyway. Um, and how we're, how we're currently doing that is obviously funding it by Warbit. That's fine by me, but not by the accountant. And um, so, you know, we're going to have to start looking at other business models. Um, I think that um, we, we're going we're gonna to have to sort of, sort of develop various value offerings. Um, one of them will be to develop a, a corporate um, sustainability mentor platform for corporates. Um, we're going to explore that. We're also going to explore, and this is me just being a complete hippie, is um, we're just going to explore donations. And we hope, hopefully the, the people at the top of the tree can, can give us a cup of coffee, a price of a cup of coffee a month. And so the people at the bottom of the tree don't need to pay to, to get a mentor, you know. Um, I, I, another that massive challenge for us is resources. You know, this is just me at the moment. And I've had to really sort of um, do a bit of soul searching and, I've, I've just come out the back end of that through, the, through COVID and I'm just going to have to say to people who, who I know, who wants to help me, you know, and I'll, and I'll, split, up, I'll split up the business and um, we'll all have different roles because I need to focus on my own business so that it survives through this crazy period um, and, yeah. and bring other people in to help me with um, sustainability mentor. I think that's the reality, Dan, isn't it? And, you know, I think one of the things about the sustainability world is that we always seem to assume that we have to do everything for free you know and yeah. we're, we're all so kind of motivated by the impact and i think you've just touched on something that it's you know it's time for it to evolve 
Um, and I mean, some of the some of the comments that are coming in have been great. We need to mobilise people, but equally, we need to, people to understand sometimes there's a cost attached to things. Oh, there's a small boy. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that I think that's really interesting. I, my question really was, will will this model always have to be free? And I think I think no. I think we do have to think outside the box. You you may be using the insight timer model, Dan, where you uh, if anyone who meditates or uses the insight timer model that you can make a small donation to the people who provide the content. You know, I, I think we do have to think about outside the box. Okay, so um, I think we're almost ready to do our last poll and then we'll go over to q and is that right? Great, should we do that? Great, okay, so what barriers, Inna was saying that they've had uh, more mentors uh, than they can imagine and but potentially want more mentees, what barriers um, have prevented you from signing up to have a mentor? Uh, please let us know. Um, some of you may already have a mentor, but if you haven't, let us know in the poll. Hey, is it the lack of time? Are you not sure of the process? Are you unclear of what the benefits are? Or are you concerned about confidentiality? If there's any others, then pop those in the chat and we'll try and pick those up as well. So I'm gonna share the results of the poll now. Great, that was really quick. Thanks everyone. Ah, there we go. So not sure of the process. I wonder if partly that's uh, back to this marketing angle, you know, not quite having the, you know, the ease of access that, that, that some other uh, platforms may have. Um, yeah, okay, that's really interesting. This is the, the, user, the user interface kind of side of things. Lack of time is always an interesting one. You've got to make the time, haven't you? I know, I know personally the value of having uh, space, as we've mentioned, and time to, to plan, to think, to clarify your ideas. Always seems like time you haven't got, but the, the value of it is, is, is massive. Okay, that's been great. And we've touched on, on most of the things I wanted to cover. Um, can I just ask before we go to Q&A, and it's the final question to the panel, kind of what are your plans for the future? Dan, you, you've covered this, but Inna, did, did you want to give us a sort of thoughts on what the plans for the future are? Yes, of course, uh, we'll be happy to. We're, we're quite ambitious and yes, um, COVID situation has derailed a lot of the work that we're doing, um, especially on the ground. Um, but we, we have this 200, 200, 200 vision, uh, meaning that uh, we would like to bring together local actors to create circle economy strategies in 200 cities. Uh, we would like to embed the circular economy into 100 university curriculums and we would like to support 100 startups and companies to implement circular practices for mentoring and uh, funding and communication. Great, that's brilliant. I, I wasn't aware of that. That's really good. Thanks very much, Inna. Can I jump in, Emma, and just... Um, yeah, of course. Just what, what we're trying to do is we're, we, we want to make sustainability mentorship normal. So, you know, if you work in finance or if you work in procurement and those sort of areas that not, not necessarily are involved with sustainability, you know, the, the, part of the part of the career is, you know, you have a sustainability mentor to help you implement um, practices. We want to just make it normal, part, a normal part of career practice. Yeah, that's great. It's all about mainstreaming, isn't it? Okay, I'm just going to have a look at the Q&A section. Oh, thanks. We've got loads of great questions here. Um, here's a really nice one. Uh, is there a conflict of interest that typically arises when talking with someone? So this could be a bit about how do you choose your mentor? Um, or, or, you know, how the matching process happens. Can the, is there ever a conflict of interest? Dan, do you want to go? Um, I guess there would be if, if it's um, two comp competing um, organisations. But, you know, this is... This is um, not business as usual. This is like, we've got to redefine business. So this is all about collaborations, unusual collaborations. So people that might have had a conflict of interest in the past, you know, that's kind of got to, we've got to bring those barriers down. Um, there's obviously a lot of um, work around etiquette 
in the mentorship program, you know, confidentiality um, and, and, um, and sort of privacy. Um, there's, there's things around, you know, respect, you know, respect in each other's time, you know, respect in each other's diary appointments and inboxes and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, and, and respecting that a mentor has given up time to, to help you grow. Um, there's an expectation that the mentee should be coachable, you know, that they've got an open mindset and ready to learn. Um, and it's really just about sort of a respect between the, the, the two parties and having clear objectives. And now if you start to map out your objectives, you know, and they don't match, then that's, that's maybe where there might be a conflict of interest. But it's, it's all about being clear on what you expect from the mentorship program. And if you're both clear and you both communicate, that should help them manage those conflict of interests. I hope that answers that question. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, very well. Ina, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I just want to expand a little bit on that and just mention that clear communication, like open communication from both of the sides actually is really crucial in this process. Because yes, we have um, some examples of like mentors being a little bit more experienced in the same sort of area where the mentees are, are developing, etc. Uh, so it's, it's all about like being clear and setting those boundaries beforehand and having this honest conversation and upfront conversation of how the relationship is going to work and what are their objectives, if, as Daniel has mentioned, like what would be sort of um, the metrics in terms of to, to understand like if if the mentorship is going in the right direction or not and like yeah it, it's all about the clear communication and being uh, upfront and honest so far we um haven't had any uh problems and challenges which mm. which we expect is a good sign uh, but yeah we sometimes take an extra step forward and just um, have a conversation separately with mentees and mentors before we match them together just to be clear and express like all the um, fears or challenges or points that uh, both of the sites might might have yeah great that, that brings me on to another question the next question actually which is from pushkar um, is there any evaluation criteria for becoming a mentor i think that's really interesting question um and actually i wanted to sort of add how do we how do we ensure that we have a good diversity of mentors so two things there sort of how do you evaluate mentors and how, how do we make them as diverse as possible yeah i can go ahead it's it's a really really good question it, it takes a lot of time to onboard a new mentor i have to admit uh, it might, it can be as quick as a week, but usually takes a few weeks or even months. Um, we take this uh, very seriously because yes, we have uh, diversity in mentors in terms of the areas that they're working in. And we are trying to expand that, um, not to have like a numerous amount of mentors in the same area and then a little amount of um, uh, mentors in another. So we're really looking at the diversity of experiences for sure. Um, it's, it's quite a rigorous process. We, we send out a, spe a special like form with lots, lots of questions, including the motivation of the mentors and their experience. We go a, look a little bit deeper into what they have done, what are the projects that they've been working on, what in general is their professional background and if they're fit um, in the scheme that, that we're creating uh, from, from our perspective. Yeah, and um, it's, it's not that rigorous when it comes to mentees, uh, of course, but like we take um, onboarding our mentors really seriously. Dan? Hey, hey, uh, hey, thanks. Sorry, a bit of something there. You know what? Um, we're completely opposite. So, I, I believe, right, that even a graduate can mentor somebody else, you know, because they've already had lessons, learned things. They can mentor someone who's younger than them or even someone at the same age, you know. So we have, we have no acceptance criteria on our system. If you want to be a mentor, and I totally encourage it as well, you know, like literally, if you, even if you've only done a week at university, you can mentor somebody, you know. Um, so this is all about passing on value to someone else and you know we can all do that so we don't have any acceptance criteria we put our mentors they choose it themselves what um, what level they think they're at 
and uh, what vertical work within, whether, whether, whether it's energy, bio, but, you know, I don't know, biogas or whatever it might be, they put their own, they put their own specifics in. And then on the flip side of that, the mentee, you know, they, they then put their own specifics in what they're looking for and the platform then kind of like matches them up, matches them up and they can, they can filter for different professions, different sectors, all that sort of thing. So um, there's no, there's no, there's yeah. no criteria, you know, this is about, this is about like maximizing impact. So I wanted to remove as many bottlenecks as I, as I, as I could. I love, I mean, I love that there's, there's, there's this difference and I think you know, yeah. mentioned the word diversity and I think that's, that's absolutely great. And, and some people might find that, um, you know, exciting down and some people might say, well, actually, I, you know, I really want a professor or I really want, you know, depends where they are. And there's a couple of questions coming through here that are really telling, I think for me, you know, is your mentorship program for business related people? Yes, absolutely. I think I can speak for the panel. You know, what about people working in academia? Yes. So I think that's coming across really strongly is that, that this, you know, these are for, this is for everybody. This could even, you know, this is even, even for someone who's, you know, trying to start a business from home, but you know, it's got other things going on. I mean, it's absolutely anybody that feels like they can have an impact. Um, and whilst that's, you know, di quite difficult to manage because it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not in, in a defined package. I think that's where we get the most strengths from. Um, somebody else mentioned uh, on the on the chat. Can you be a mentor and a mentee at the same time? Dan, I think yes, you said you can on your platform. Um, you might be an expert in one field and might want to improve in another. And that's exactly right. And then a question from Alice Gibbs here that said, she's been part of mentoring initiatives before, but it's always been driven by the mentee and the mentors have stayed away from actually guiding me. I think it's quite interesting. And it's quite interesting about the perception or um, perception that you might have going into the relationship. Um, so do uh, CEC and sustainable mentors initiatives allow for someone like me who really wants to be part of circular economy movements but isn't sure how I can do that I would say that's the perfect mentee you know someone who just who, who wants to do something but isn't sure of the path that they're going to take would you agree or is there a, is there a perfect mentee um, yeah. sorry um... You know, the, the perfect mentee is somebody who is willing to be coached and who, 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 who wants to just be pushed that little bit outside their comfort zone. Because, you know, if, if I wish I wish I, when I was like 21, I kind of switched off. And I thought, oh, that's it, I'm done, you know, and I'll just go through my career. But it took me till I was about like, I don't know, yesterday. No, when I was about, when I was about 40, like five years ago to realize, oh my God, I'm not done. I've got to like, I've run that, you know, I've got, I've got so much more to learn. So like, I'm, I'm now in a, I'm, a, I'm now in a state of like constant accelerated learning, you know, and I wish if I'd, if I'd had that from when I left uni, when I thought I was done to like, to now I'd be like way, way, way more impact. So all I'd say to mentees is, you know, have that, have that what's called a growth mindset. Yeah. So you're constantly growing. And you know, if you, if you can keep that growth mindset, you'll be absolutely you know, having the most impact you can have and helping us to transition to that um, sustainability that we all want. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Inna? Anything? Yeah, I can't, I, I can't agree more. Uh, it really is important be, being this open-minded. Also, what it seems to be important, at least in, in my experience, is having this big burning question um, that, that drives you, that gives you this energy to move on and, and, and be curious and stay curious and stay open to uh, different experiences that you come around about. And mentorship can help with getting some clarity around these questions. But what can also happen is that you might end up having more questions, just slightly in a different area. And that's a beautiful journey by itself as well. Um, so, yeah, I would say staying open, being curious, and uh, being willing to experiment and learn uh, from the experiences that are coming. Yeah, that's great. I think the open-mindedness and the growth mindset is absolutely right. And when you, you, when you realize you're, you're gonna be growing every day, you know, in, until, until way past retirement, I'm sure, there's always, you know, there's always a good time to, to have a mentor. Uh, I think it's really good to break out of sometimes your own your own maybe consultancy environment or or the corporate you work for the brand that you work for even your startup business and just 
uh, reflect on that. Again, Emma, I'm, you're not allowed. Emma, you're not allowed to retire. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I retired years ago, Dan. It's just a bit, you know, fictitious. We need you. Um, we need you. I were, uh, yeah, no, thank you, Dan. That's very sweet. I'll never retire. I think that the, the, you know, I love the thing about if you if your passion is your job, you never have to work again. So you know that, that that's great. So um, there's a lot of people saying that they're going to connect, and this is really great. Um, and then they want the links and that sort of thing. There's one question here, maybe about the future. Can the can the platform be enhanced for people to, and I suppose platforms, uh, to people to post their questions um, or where they are stuck and see who replies to that? This would be like the Quora model. Uh, the focus could be on sustainability goals or circular economy. Okay. Um, and they, they go on to add that, that advertising would be discouraged. But what about this kind of question and answer uh, platform? Is that something either of you have thought of? It's a beautiful idea. I really like it. Um, mm, one, like of the thing, one of the challenges we have is that actually um, I, am, I am, once the mentor and mentee match with each other, you know, I don't know anything beyond that really. Uh, so we're really challenge, challenging is like, just trying to like get into that, still stick with that process. So there's a LinkedIn group, great. You know, there's Twitter and all that malarkey, but you know, a question answer thing might be nice. And you know, part of our development will be like a community space, so that we can we can do that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I can add from our side that a few years ago we we had sort of like an attempt to um, increase um, different functionality that we offer in our website, but we all realized that basically we do not want to create another like Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. There are a lot of other channels already where people can just ask their questions and uh, get support from uh, anonymous web of minds um, in, in the internet. But what we also are really working towards to is developing our circular economy club chapters or like the city hubs where mm. people can connect in the same city or in the same region and can come to an event and share maybe their challenges and, and get the feedback straight away from basically their peers or other people who are working in the same uh, areas or maybe in a different areas, but like really focusing on uh, creating this um, local communities um, that uh, can grow into something bigger in bigger collaboration eventually or, or even mentorship, unofficial mentorship opportunities that are not coming through us officially, but it, it, it can come something uh, for this uh, um, aspect. So yes, I would strongly encourage you to take a look at our website, uh, apply, uh, join the community, find the local events in your area, go out, meet people, have conversations, share the challenges, uh, share the insights and learnings that you experience. Because um, this is what we're all about. It's connecting different minds, uh, different mindset of people into a bigger community so we can collectively have a bigger impact than all of us individually. Yeah, that's great. And that sort of leads me on to my final question, really. So we've talked about your plans for the future, but what do you need to make these plans happen? And we've touched on a few of the barriers and the challenges, but yeah, so what do we, what do we need from the, from the 43 people that are left here today uh, and, and anybody others that are interested, what, what needs to happen next? Dan? Thanks. Um, yeah, so I would just say to the people who are still here, um, sign up at sustainabilitymentor.com or just put it in Google, it'll be the first or second one. Um, so you can start getting involved with mentorship um, and just accelerating that impact or maximizing that impact. From a business point of view for us, you know, it's about building the team um, and um, making uh, sustainability normal. You know, and that means building partnerships, building, um, building value, and just get, getting out there and making sure people know where to go to pick up a mentee or a mentor. Yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, Ina? Yeah, it's a great point. Um, um, yeah, just sign up, join, join the movement and explore uh, what it can bring you to. Like for me specifically, when I joined the community about two years ago, uh, I did not join as a part of the volunteer crew. I was just there to attend a few events and then I met some inspiring people and I've learned so much and I wanted to 
I felt this need and this call to do more and to, to engage more in any way that I could at that moment of time. And it led me to places uh, where I would never think I would go. And it led me to meet people okay. who I would never think I would ever meet. And like all this richness of the experience and learnings that, that came through is really fascinating. And it has really changed my life like entirely. So strongly encourage you to sign up to come join uh, talk to us connect uh, uh, if you have an idea just um, think of getting a mentor and um, let, let's see how we can create co-create together yeah that's fascinating that you put that beautifully and i think um i think one of the things i've learned from from uh speaking more broadly with people all over the globe is that if you push on a door it nearly always opens and you never quite know what's going to be behind it um, and that can take, I mean, we've had questions here about, um, you know, would this, could this help with my career coming out of university? Absolutely. In fact, I'd, I'd say it was almost essential, you know, um, uh, you know, but could this help with maybe, you know, transitioning or pivoting my career or my business? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, there is a really rich body. Um, and the thing we have as a sector and a sector is very, very broad. I accept that is that we all have a passion for what we do and a passion to try and reduce impact. So um, I would say, you know, almost 100% of people you will meet will want to help you and their, their heart is in the right place. Um, so that's, that's really, uh, I think, reassuring for anybody who's new, who wants to come into this network and maybe a bit daunted, they're new to it. Um, but yeah, bring, bring what you can, you know, bring your, bring your open mind. And I think uh, you, you have confidence that everyone's got something to add. Um, I think there's a little thing here about maybe interplay between different platforms. So somebody mentioned the Ellen MacArthur circular economy course that's going on at the moment. Um, I was talking to someone yesterday who's on that course and they said they've got a Slack channel and there's about a thousand people on that channel. So I'm just wondering whether or not, you know, we could do a better job of maybe um, integrating or not, you know, not integrating formally, but making sure that all these platforms kind of know about each other and uh, that we're, you know, that we're transmitting as many places as we can. And maybe there's a role there, Dan, you know, and you know, for, for mentors to do a little bit more of that promotion, because I'm a mentor on both platforms and I'm always talking about both, but I wonder whether we're really harnessing that um, enough. So, uh, you know, so there's actually, there's somebody else here saying they're on the EMF Foundation course as well. So I know there's a lot going on, but the skill is trying to you know, what happens when that course finishes? You know, maybe they could bounce into a mentor kind of relationship quite easily. Have any of you got any thoughts about, about how, we, how we create synergies between different platforms and... Yeah, um, I can mention that we, yeah. so far, we, we have worked with Ellen MacArthur Foundation on different oh, aspects, great. on different uh, um, pro projects, uh, so to say. So we are, we know of each other, um, but it, a lot of the growing that we had from our side was uh, basically word of mouth. Yeah. Um, so if you are in that course, I strongly encourage you just to talk to, to other people who are there, just share this opportunity with them and, uh, um, and let's grow in this way. Um, because it, it is a little bit tricky in my view to combine the, all those different mm. platforms because there's so much going on. You're right, Emma, there's so much going on around the globe. And like, I did not know about Daniel before, before we had a chance to talk about and, and join this panel together, which oh, is great. Well, there you go. Amazing. And uh, I think the events like these and like just, um, yeah, communication in, in its different shapes and forms is, is the way forward. Yeah, so Nick on the chat has just said there's actually two and a half thousand people on that EMF Foundation course. So that's that in itself is really, really fascinating to me and, and brilliant and shows that some of the demand is there, Dan, that you that you've picked up. That's what I was going to say. You know, um, I, I think for everybody listening, you know, it's when you're doing something new like this, you know, you've got to have no ego. You know, this isn't about this is my project. You know, it's like we need to save the world. You know, it's like. We've got a big job to do. So yeah. you've got to just like go as big as you can and um, make as many connections as you can and don't be precious about things. And then um, one thing which this, this set this platform was showing me is, you know, a few, a few people when I, when I suggested to them right at the start, was like, oh, well, you know, 
CIWM does mentorship, AEMA does mentorship. And I'm like, yeah, but those, those organizations attract a different type of person that I might attract. So I'm just going to do this anyway. Yeah, you know? okay. So there's, 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 the world is huge. The, the, the audience is huge. There's only a tiny, tiny, tiny amount on the, on, with Ellen MacArthur. There's only a tiny, tiny amount with Circuit Economy Club. Let's have 20 more mentorship platforms as well, you know? So the, there's such a large thing to go at that no one should really be precious about their audience, you know? So I'm all for yeah. massive collaboration wherever we can, can have it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think once we're getting up to about 6 billion, we might, you know, we might. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're in a tiny niche, all us now on this, this little call. Oh, we are. We're a tiny, I mean, we tiny niche. This, yeah, we're funny. We talk about thousands as being like, wow. But, you know, yeah. it, it is a, it's a drop in the ocean. So, um, so yeah, I think, you know, something great's come out of this. And uh, thank you to Be Waste Wise for organising it for us. And hopefully we'll, you know, we, we've started to push that stone, stone down the hill or the snowball and it will gather, gather more and more s s snow, as, 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 get a bigger and bigger snowball as, as it goes. Um, personally, I'd love to hear from anybody that's, um, you know, enjoyed today or wants to give us some feedback, happy to connect. And I know that the links have been added. Um, and uh, yeah, over to you, Sweater, if you want to just wrap things up. Yes. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Ina. And thank you, Dan. Uh, I don't think I have to mention again that the panel was very good because you can see quite a few comments where everyone's going on and on about how the panel has been super informative and very engaging like it, it was really good thanks a lot for your time and uh, uh, all the others who i mean the audience who have any questions you want to connect further you will find all of them you just need they're just a google search away in case you still have difficulty please write to us at connect at wastewise.be we will be happy to respond to you or connect you further with any of the panelists. And uh, a recording of this panel is gonna be available for all of you and it'll be up on our website in a couple of weeks as well. So thanks right. a lot for your time and uh, that's it for now, bye-bye. Thanks everyone, thanks for joining. See you again. <laughs>